sailors and welcome back to your next Sail Smart video. My name's Jake and this time we're talking about how to read a weather forecast. Obviously, it goes without saying that reading a weather forecast is the bread and butter of any sailing session that goes afloat. We have to know what the weather's going to do, otherwise, unfortunately, we could find ourselves in a bit of a sticky situation. Always. Try and look at more than one forecast. As a magic rule, try three. But there's nothing wrong with looking at four or five forecasts if you're struggling to work out exactly what the weather's going to do whilst you're on the water. Now, there is no substitution for local knowledge. And whilst you're sailing at an RYA recognised training centre or a club, there will be instructors there that will know the local characteristics, maybe the weather forecasts that they use that are most accurate to help you have a nice time on the water. There are a plethora of weather forecasts out there that you can go and look at. I think ones that I've come across that are most popular are things like XC Weather, Wind Guru, Wind Finder, Windy.com, and even just the BBC. However, there is one weather forecast that I think pips them to the post and is the most reliable and is used most widely by all our instructors. And that is the Met Office Inshore Forecast. Now, this is a specific marine forecast and that means it takes into account a few extra things that land forecasts might not. And it's also not for the land, it's for the water. Now, a inshore waters forecast works like this. It's on the Met Office website and it's easily accessible by your phone or by a computer. Once you get onto the right web page, you will need to know A, where you're going sailing and where you're going sailing. There is no point looking at a weather forecast for tomorrow when you're going sailing in four days time. With location, the inshore's forecast is split up into regions. If you go onto the website, you'll be able to see that the entire coastline of the UK is split up into areas and you just need to click on the area where you're going sailing and the weather forecast will pop up. Obviously, you'll be able to see that the area is actually quite large. And a fun fact is that it's actually measured up to 12 nautical miles offshore. So the weather forecast can be for quite a large area when we're only sailing in a very, very small portion of that. So just remember that when we're reading our weather forecast, if it says something and it's in the east of that region and we're sailing in the west of that region, it might not necessarily apply to us. When you read the forecast, you'll see that at the top there is a general situation, which sounds very exciting and will give you the general idea of what's going on. This will be whether there's a weather front moving through, whether there's clear skies, just generally, if you could sum it up, that's what will be in the general situation. And I would encourage you to read that because it will set your mind on the right path to reading the weather forecast. Following that, you'll see that there are four sections. Those sections are wind, sea state, visibility, and weather. In the wind section, it's going to use numbers to describe the strength of wind. And these numbers represent the Beaufort wind scale. So if you're not sure what that is, either stay tuned for a later video or take a look on the internet. One of the words you'll find is variable. Now this normally comes up when we've got some light wind days. And with light winds, the wind can be affected a little bit more often. And the wind will change direction more frequently than it should. Because we don't know the exact direction, they'll call it variable. And on these days, you might find that a local feature, like a sea breeze, is going to be a little bit more dominant. The other words are backing and veering. Now then, these are to do with the wind changing direction and the way that it's going to do that. So if the wind is going to veer, it's going to change direction, but it's going to do it in a clockwise manner. So if you were to imagine looking at the area you're going sailing in, perhaps on a map, and if it's going to go clockwise, well, that's going to be veering. You've got it. If it's backing, the wind is changing direction anti-clockwise. Now then, sea state. Now, sea state is basically the waves, the height of the waves. How big are they? And some of these numbers might sound quite daunting to you if you sail inshore or in a harbour like I learned to sail for many years as a youngster. Seeing a wave that was more than maybe a couple of feet high and things were pretty windy. So, 
Remember that these sea states are for up to 12 miles offshore and they can be much, much bigger with a much smaller wind strength. So don't panic too much if you hear these words, but this is what the words actually mean. So we've got smooth, which is up to half a meter high, slight, which is half a meter to 1.5, moderate is 1.5 to 2.5, and it does go on beyond that, but I think those sea states are gonna be well beyond the wind strength that we're gonna be want to be sailing in our sailing dinghies. So, moving on. We've got the weather. Now this is really, really simple, especially for a cloud expert like yourself. Fair is the only tricky word in here. The other words are gonna be rain, snow, hail, that sort of thing, and I'm sure you know what those are. Fair is a little bit ambiguous. We're not really sure what that means. In this forecast, it means that really it's not changing. It might be sunny, it might be cloudy, but there's nothing to worry about. There's no distinguishing features of the weather. Finally, we've got visibility. Now, first and foremost, I would always encourage you to sail where you can visibly see where you've come from. Now, that might be round the corner, I understand, but make sure that you can always see the land from whence you came. So with visibility, it's gonna say probably good, moderate, or poor. Now, good, means that we've got up to five nautical miles of visibility, and that's a lot. Moderate is two to five miles visibility, and poor is gonna be less than two miles. So if we look at an actual weather forecast now, hopefully it will make a bit more sense. So the wind here is northerly or northeasterly two to four. When it says northeasterly, that means it's coming from that direction rather than moving towards that direction. So northeasterly is coming from the northeast, moving to the southwest, two to four. And those numbers are the Beaufort wind scale, two to four, that's gonna be medium to medium strong wind, potentially. Sea state, slight. Now we know that that means that there could be a tiny little wave. Becoming smooth or slight means that it's gonna get a little bit less, a little bit flatter on the waves. The weather, fog patches later in the north. Now in the north doesn't mean in Scotland, it means in the north of this particular area, which actually was around London. So it's gonna be slightly north in that area. Visibility, moderate or good. Now remember that refers to a specific amount of miles, occasionally very poor later in the north. And again, you can match that up with the fog to realize that that's what it's talking about. Below that, you can see an outlook for the following 24 hours. And you've guessed it, if you find when this forecast was written, that one is for the following 24 hours. Something else that can help us with working out what the weather is doing is looking at a weather station. Now this won't give us a weather forecast, but it can help us out. So for example, if you sail near Weymouth, there are two of these on the breakwater. And if you sail in Chichester Harbour, there's one inside and outside the harbour. And there's many, many others around the country. Now these will show you what the weather is doing and what the weather has done not what the weather is going to do. But we can add this in to help us work out what the weather is going to do. The reason for this is we can look at basic trends in the weather forecast. So if we look at some of the other weather forecasts here, we can notice basic trends. For example, here you can see when the wind changes direction to a southeasterly, the wind is going to build and we can watch that see when the wind changes direction. And at that point, we know that we need to reef, we need to go ashore, or now we're gonna start planning and have some fun. Now, don't forget, when you're planning your trip and you've got your weather forecast and you think you know what you're going to do, don't forget to add in the tide if you're sailing on a coastal location, because the tide can have a slight effect on the weather as well, mainly to do with the sea state. If the wind and the tide are going in opposite directions, and you call that wind over tide, that can make it a little bit more choppy. If the wind and the tide are going in the same direction, normally that will flatten things out a bit. So don't forget, there's no substitute for local knowledge. Ask your instructor or someone at your club and have a great time when you're sailing. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you soon for another Sail Smart video. All the best.